Hey everyone, how's it going? Hassan here. I want to do another vlog for you today. This one is about the Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions concert. So, uh, I came back from it a little while ago. It is like 12.35 right now I'm recording it. So it's after midnight. It's technically Saturday morning now. Uh, but Friday night, last night, I this night I guess, uh, I went to the first ever official Pokemon concert. Uh, it happened in Washington, D.C. at the Warner Theater, and it was called the Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions Concert. And they played music from all the different games and everything, and it was an awesome experience. The second they announced it, I bought tickets right away, and I was very excited about it because I, I'm a band geek. You know, I love uh, music and, and video game music especially as well. Uh, I played flute in middle school and French horn in high school and and you know I was in marching band for a little bit and uh, so I'm, I'm always you know big into orchestral music and everything so I was really excited about this concert and I wanted to do a vlog kind of talking about all of this so there's a lot of Pokemon stuff actually happening this weekend it is the weekend of the Pokemon World Championships, and it's actually happening in Washington, D.C., luckily enough. So that is kind of why they, I think they did the concert there to kind of kick things off. So they had uh, the concert tonight, and it got sold out. So they actually had to do another uh, concert in D.C. They're doing it Saturday night. But the World Championships is going on this weekend. Uh, I had planned to go on Saturday and Sunday just to check it out. I'm not competing, obviously. But, I, you know, I, I might not go on Saturday, actually, just because I might take care of a couple things and I might try and edit this vlog and everything. So, uh, But I will definitely try and go on Sunday. And I'll be there for a couple hours and just kind of hang out and, and check things out. So if any of you are there on Sunday, say hi. I'd love to, to meet you, and, and, and uh, it would be really cool. But... I wanted to do this vlog in the meantime, going over like in detail with pictures and video and everything, all about the Symphonic Evolutions concert. So, uh, first things first, um, I I didn't really dress up or anything. There were a bunch of people like in Pokemon shirts or they had like little hats and stuff. The the most I did is I got a little Mega Charizard uh, pin. I don't I don't know if that's Mega Mega Charizard X or Y. I always get them mixed up, but it's one of them. I got them with a Pokemon TCG set or something. Um, so I, that's pretty much the extent of, of me dressing up. But I went, uh, took the Metro to, to DC, took the brand new Silver Line, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so it took a while to get there, and the cost was, was pretty expensive, and parking too. It actually was pretty costly. But anyway, so um, I got there, and there was a line to get into the to the Warner Theater, and and uh, I'll show you. You guys can see that the picture of, of the little sign outside about the concert for for the Warner Theater. Um, and I was waiting in line to get in, and and um, so there's a you know a bunch of people in, in line, and, and people were getting their street their three DSs out and doing street pass and everything, and and uh, so I kind of got mine out and started to do some street pass, and and I still have more to actually clear out. My, my the light is green, so. I still have more to clear out. I kind of focused just on Puzzle Swap and a little bit of Find Me as well, just to try and get as much as I could. But still, it was just so much. So that was uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, and uh, once we got in, right at the the main entrance, I guess there was also a uh, a merchandise booth, and they had two different posters, one with like a white background and one with a, a black background, and they're both kind of neat. And I debated getting it, but then I was like. When am I, you know, or where am I really going to have space? I have all these other posters up. I'm not really going to have much space. And and they said there was going to be a signing later and stuff. I was like, maybe I'll buy the poster to get it signed. But I kind of decided not to. But instead, I got the t-shirt that they had because I love t-shirts, especially, like, exclusive ones for these cool events like that. So I bought this t-shirt right here. So it's got Pikachu in a little conducting outfit, which is really cute. And it says, dun dun dun, dun Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions. So I love that. I love this kind of thing. I got one for the, the Zelda concert when that happened. I bought a t-shirt for it, and, and I, I love having these these kinds of exclusive t-shirts. I'm a sucker for t-shirts. Um, so uh, that's what I bought. And uh, then, basically, once I was trying to get seated, um, I thought I I bought tickets that were, like, up close and everything, you know. And, and But when they were seating me, they're like, no, you're upstairs. And I was like, that doesn't seem right. But, you know, I went upstairs and I kind of, they, they seated me somewhere. And I was like, I, I don't think this is right. But, you know, I was sitting there for a while and and I waited. I was like, you know, what 
should I let me should I say something or what? And it's like, did I did I just order the wrong tickets? I was kind of second guessing myself. I was like, what is going on? Um, but so while I was sitting there though, temporarily, you can see kind of a view right now, a picture of of the orchestra and everything. They're getting warmed up and, and ready, and and uh, they they started to do who's that Pokemon. Uh, on the on the screen there, which is kind of neat, and and everybody would yell out the Pokemon, and and when when they did Pikachu, everybody cheered and stuff. But it was kind of neat that they did that. I thought that was that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, while I was up there, I was uh, I pulled up Twitter real quick, and and I was checking, and I saw um, a tweet from uh, from Poke Beach. Um, who, if you don't know, Poke Beach is, is one of the, the big Pokemon fan sites. So there's um, you know Cerebi. There's Bulba Garden, Poke Beach is another, so um, they all kind of have their, their specialties, like Poke Beach does a lot of the, the TCG stuff as well, a lot of TCG news, but they do other things as well. And they are my favorite Pokemon website, um, because just um, the guy that runs it, you know, from what I've seen of his posts and everything, he's pretty respectable and everything, and some of the other people on the other sites have their moments of, of times when uh, they can annoy me a little bit, I guess, but uh, Poke Beach has, has never done that, and they've always been, you know, well-respected, I think, and, and uh, their their news always, like, is very clear and, and detailed and everything. Some other websites you go to, um, it can be kind of hard to fully understand the full news story, so they kind of lay it out very nicely, and and so, any, anyways, I'm a big fan of their site. I've gone to their site for, for years, and um, so I was, you know, I was like, oh, wow, you know, they're actually here, and and it looked like they were up close to the, to the thing. I was like, oh, maybe I'll try and, you know, meet them somehow. I, I didn't know what the guy looked like that, that ran the site, but I was like, you know, that would be kind of cool if I met him. But anyways, so when I was sitting there, um, then I was like, you know what? All right, I, I should say something because this is not the right seat. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I bought tickets that were, like, up close. Something is wrong. Uh, but before I even said anything, then somebody else was coming up to the row where I was, and he's like, I think you're in my seat. And I pulled it up, and I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, I, I, that's what I figured, is something is wrong, and there's another guy there, and he looked at it, he's like, oh, yeah, you are, you know, seated downstairs in the, the main area, and I was like, that's what I thought. So then they, they took me down to the, um, to the, the, the front, and, and I did have, as I thought, second row tickets, so literally downstairs, right in front of the orchestra, second row tickets, as I thought. Um, so I pretty much was taken to my seat right as the concert was starting, so I didn't really get it to say much, but as I got there, everybody was, like, giving me these looks, like, I, I, I maybe, I don't know, because I was there, like, right at the last second or something, I was like, what is going on? Um, but it almost felt like, just looking around, it felt like there were a lot of, like, like, it felt like this was, like, the elite Pokemon fan area, in a way. It was like, I don't know, something about it, it just gave me this vibe, like, because this is the people that are buying tickets, you know, right away. They're getting front row seats almost, I guess. So I figured these were, like, the big-time Pokemon fans. But I don't follow the competitive scene or anything like that, so I don't recognize a lot of these people. Um, so I was like, hmm, I wonder, you know, who's around me. I might be sitting, like, next to a Pokemon world champion, and I wouldn't know it or something. You know what I mean? Like, I had no idea. But, um, but it was really cool. I was in the second row. And um, you can see in the, in the picture just how close I was. And, and uh that was just fantastic. Just hearing the music that close, like, it felt like the music was right in my face. Like, it was there, you know? It was, um, it was, uh, really cool. So, th those were some, some great seats. And, and th throughout the thing, I mean, yeah, I was so up close that I kind of cut off part of the screen, but I wasn't there to, like, really watch the video too much. I could, I could pay attention enough to know what was going on, on the screen, but I was so close that I could really hear the music and everything, and, and I think that was definitely worth it. So, um, more more advantages than disadvantages, I guess, to being super up close. Um, so that was really cool. And so they started off the um, the concert with uh, and and by the way, um, thanks to a Poke Beach for for kind of like live tweeting almost because he essentially tweeted out all the tracks. So I'm trying to I organized all my thoughts in here because otherwise I was gonna forget a lot of stuff. So he or he actually put all the track names. He tweeted each of them out and stuff. So. Um, I'm, I'm using that as a, as a reference, so thank you to, to Poke Beach for, for tweeting those. Um, but the first song was called Overture, and it essentially started off 
um, with, you know, your classic Pokemon stuff, and it kind of, it scrolled through all the video game covers, starting from the originals, and all through all the generations up to the recent stuff, and, and, uh, that was pretty cool. So I have a, a brief video that you can watch that kind of, uh, shows you what that was like. And so uh, after that overture, um, then the, the uh, conductor kind of stopped for a bit and said hi and everything and welcomed everybody. And she actually had a Pokeball that was like, it was like this big maybe, and it was a, it's like a beach ball kind of thing. Um, but it was a Pokeball and it was signed by Junichi Masuda and, and a couple other people as well uh, involved in the Pokemon games. And then she threw that out into the audience and this, this kid caught it. I think his kid's name was Antonio or something, but... Uh, so he caught it, which was really cool, um, and uh, and then after that it was right back to the music, so nonstop until the intermission. But so the second one they did was Pallet Town, so another classic right there, which was pretty cool. Um, the uh, third one, the third track was Prepare for Trouble, so a lot of Team Rocket stuff. You could hear the Team Rocket music and uh, fighting Giovanni and everything, and and so they throughout the whole thing they had video clips alongside the music, of course, and. And um, it, uh, it was pretty cool. I, the music sounded great, very nostalgic, just hearing the Team Rocket music and everything again. Um, I did film a little clip of that music from the Prepare to Trouble track, so check that out. So that was the, the Team Rocket one. Um, and then the fourth track was Born to be a Champion. And that kind of like encompassed a whole bunch of the, the old classic stuff. Um, so this was your, your very, you know, nostalgic music. This is what the original stuff was. Uh, but it went through like it showed all the, the gyms from the red, blue, uh, yellow versions and everything. Um, it showed the Elite Four, the Hall of Fame. It kind of pretty much took you through the entire journey of the original games. And uh, with the classic music and everything, it was, it was really cool. So I, I, uh, I really like that. Um, and I, I did take a short clip of that as well, so check that out. So that is that. Uh, the fifth track was Ecrutique City, uh, which was also pretty cool. Uh, so that's we're starting to get into gold and silver and, and you know second generation stuff now as well. Uh, sixth track was Songs of the Towers. Um, seventh track was Ellipses. Um, a, a lot of these things, see a, a bunch of the tracks like I don't fully recognize because it's been so long since I played a lot of these games and and there's a bunch of these games I never finished you know I love the Pokemon games but I just <laughs> as much as I love them I really don't play them as much as most people do so it's kind of weird but um, the music is great I just didn't recognize a good chunk of it so a lot of this stuff like I didn't fully recognize maybe little bits I was like oh yeah that kind of sounds familiar but you know but so anyway so the track seven was ellipses uh, track 8 was Ancients of Hoenn. Um, so a lot of these with tracks, like with this one, it would kind of show the legendary Pokemon and things, so so that was pretty cool. Uh, track 9 was uh, Falling Ashes. Um, so by the way, now we're getting into the third generation stuff. So it kind of went in order through the generations there. Uh, for Falling Ashes, I did record a little short clip here. So that is that. That was uh, Falling Ashes. Uh, the tenth track was End of the Road. Uh, more Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald music there. 
um, the ending music and everything uh, to, to, to those games. Uh, the 11th track was probably one of my favorites, maybe my favorite. I, I don't know if it was my complete favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite, but it was definitely one of my top uh, favorites. I'm saying the word favorite a lot. Um, but it was called Dreams and Adventures, and it was from Diamond and Pearl. And it was uh, very, like, it's like very emotional music, but it's very uh, nostalgic to me because uh, throughout the years with the games, I mean, I was a fan of Pokemon from the beginning, um, but my interest, like, I, I played each of them, gold, silver, you know, I got the gold version, I got ruby version, but my interest kind of, like, slowly faded a little bit after ruby came out, and and uh, it was Pokemon Diamond version that really kick-started my interest again, maybe um, because it was, um, you know, on the on the DS or something, I don't know what it was, but something about it kind of really kick-started my interest, and I was, you know, really excited about that game, and the music in that game really sticks out to me as well. Um, and so this track was, was definitely, uh, really cool. And it was very, um, it like, it hit me hard, you know, I was, I didn't, I didn't like tear up, but I was, I was close to that point, I guess. Um, and, uh, it sounded, it sounded great, definitely. Um, but I did have a, a little clip of that as well, so you can check that out. So that's Dreams and Adventures. I tried to take little clips throughout whenever there's some cool moments, but there was a lot of great moments, and obviously I didn't record the entire concert or anything. Uh, I do hope that they do release like a CD of it or something. That would be really sweet, but um, even so, I, I did want to at least give you guys some clips from, from the concert if I could. Um, and they didn't say no when I was recording, so, you know, I figured it was fine. Uh, then the fifth, or no, the twelfth track, there we go, is Roots of Sinnoh. Uh, 13th track, so that kind of went through a couple of the different routes in there. Nothing too special stood out to me with that track. Uh, track 13 was the Lake Guardians. Um, and so that kind of took you to the Azelf, Uxi, and Misprit, or however you pronounce those. Um, but it was some pretty cool music. I, I did like that. Um, and that kind of led into the intermission. So it kind of, that track ended and it had the Symphonic Evolutions logo and stuff. And it, and it kind of went into the intermission. So I did record the very ending of, of the Late Guardians track. So check that out. And with that, it was intermission time. So uh, the uh, everybody kind of got up and took a little break and everything. And I, I took some pictures of the crowd so you can kind of check that out and, and see there were a lot of people. I mean, it was a sold out show, you know, so a sold out concert. So uh, it was definitely packed and uh, it was pretty cool to see a lot of, of people of so many different ages, kids and, and, and older adults and everything. So full range of, of, of ages and, and like nationalities, you know. There's people from, from all over. There's people behind me that, like, I believe were for, for, from Japan because they're speaking uh, Japanese a little bit later on, so I guess that makes sense. Um, but, um, yeah, so it was really cool seeing people from all over. I even street passed somebody later on from Sweden, I think. So because I guess it's the World Championships and this event is a part of that weekend, there were so many people from, from so many different uh, nationalities and everything that were there, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, then, uh, so during the intermission... Uh, it was interesting because three seats away from me uh, was somebody who I guess a lot of people know, but I don't really know, but uh, he's called The Jaywitz, and apparently he's popular on YouTube. He has, uh, I looked him up um, right before I did this video, and he has over a million view or not a million views, a million subscribers. Um, so he's pretty popular, I guess, and he does a lot of like video game stuff and everything, especially Pokemon things also. Um, so The Jaywitz 
he was uh, like three seats away from me. I took a little picture that you can see of uh, somebody gave him a little gift or something, but it was crazy because like he had a line like wrapping. We we're at the front, right? But the line was wrapping in front of us and then like all the way almost back to like the exit. So there was like a lot of people in line to, to take pictures with him and everything. And he was like, uh, it's, he seemed a little flustered. Like he was kind of surprised, I think, that, that there's so many people in line for him there. So much to the point that when the intermission stopped after however long it was a you know decent intermission 15 minutes or something maybe i don't know but um the line had to he had to like tell people like i'm sorry concert starting like and everybody had to like break off and go back to their seats so there was a lot of people there for him so um that was kind of interesting uh, that, that uh that he was there and everything so i was like three seats away from him um and then uh the other really cool thing that happened is so I mentioned that Poke Beach was there, right? And so, you know, and during the intermission, I pulled up Twitter again. I'm looking, and I was like, oh, I remember Poke Beach was like near where I sit. So I was like, I wonder if I can figure out what area he's sitting in, and maybe I can ask around and, and figure out who who it is and, and meet him and everything. Um, and then I looked at the picture, and it looks like it's almost right where I'm sitting. And I'm like, wait a second. So he's literally like right near me. And, uh, um, there was a guy, so right in front of me, there's, there's this girl, and then to, to her right was this other guy who, he was on Twitter, you know, or something, like, uh, throughout the concert, and, and I looked at Poke Beach's Twitter, and he's on Twitter the entire time tweeting, and I was like, huh, and he, I guess he, he went away for, you know, maybe to get a break or something, but when he came back, I was like, are you the guy from Poke Beach? You know, and he's like, yeah, and I was like, oh, you know, really, that's cool, and, 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 uh, so I shook his hand, and I met him, uh, so, uh, I, I knew him at, you know, Poke Beach, or, or Water Pokemon Master, as he goes by, like, on his forums and stuff, uh, his name's John, uh, but we talked for a little bit, and it was really cool meeting him, I told him I was a big fan of his site, and I'd followed him for, for years, and, and, uh, you know, we, he asked me if I played the TCG, and I was like, not really. I mean, I still buy the card sometimes, and he's like, you know, same thing there. And we talked a little bit about, like, I, I told him what I majored in and everything with school. And, and then, yeah, I don't know, just a little conversation and stuff. But it was really cool getting to, to meet him. I did not expect that, that he would be there, but it was really cool getting to meet uh, uh, him since since I'm a big fan of, of his site and everything as well. So um, I did uh, ask him for a picture as well. So uh, here's here's that picture that you can see. So yeah, it was it was pretty cool, um, really really cool meeting uh, meeting John. So uh, if you're watching this, I don't know if you are, but nice meeting you, I guess, and keep up the great work. Uh, so that was that, um, and then what was also really cool um, is somebody noticed. Maybe it was maybe it was John from Poke Beach or somebody, but they're like, you know, wait, look up there, and, and we look, we turn around, and up in the the balcony. Um, area kind of is none other than Junichi Masuda, director of Game Freak and essentially director of the Pokemon games. You know, he's the guy in charge uh, for the Pokemon games. And he was there taking it, like, he brought his phone to, like, quickly take a picture of everybody and, and, uh, um, us in the front, like me and, and, and uh, the guy from Poke Beach and a couple other people, I think we all waved and he waved back at us. Um, and uh, and then I guess he took a pic couple pictures or something and then and then left. So I, I tried to like take a picture real quick and I kind of I got a picture of him, you know, with his camera or phone or whatever. So you can see that there. But that was really cool. So I was like, oh sweet. So Junichi Masuda, you know, is here. I, I kind of figured he would be, um, especially when they said there would be a signing and stuff. But he actually was there, and and that was really cool. And, uh, and so that was exciting, you know, and I, and, I, and I was really happy. I was really enjoying everything up until that point that the music was great. I got to meet the guy from Poke Beach. I saw Junichi Masuda and I had great seats and everything was good. Um, and then it was time for the concert to resume and things only got better from there. You know, the, the, the rest of the concert was also great. The, the 14th track, what they resumed with was Pokemon Center. Uh, so I did record some of that as well. So check that out.
Yep, so that was part of it, and they kind of continued with the, the classic Pokemon Center music and stuff as well. Uh, and then they got into Pokemon Black and White, and so the 15th track was The Day I Become King. Uh, it, it had um, a couple different things to it, so it had the intro to, to Pokemon Black and White, a little bit of that, and so I have a video showing that. And then the other part of it was um, just some I, I, just some other other stuff that it showed. I can't remember what this other video clip I have shows specifically, um, but I do have another video clip, so check it out. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was all about uh, N. I mean, it kind of showed the little cinematic sequence about N and stuff, and it, it kind of showed those, those little clips. Um, but it was it was pretty cool. Um, and then the sixteenth track was N Counter, um, and uh, that was also great. A lot of like epic music, really like fast paced, got you really pumped up. Some good stuff there, and, and so I had to record a video of that. So check it out. So that was that one. Uh, that was pretty cool. I did like that. Uh, track 17 was Farewell. Uh, track 18 was An Eternal Prison, which was an X and Y track. Um, track 19, Welcome to Kalos. Um, more uh, XY stuff. And uh, and that one, um, they you know showed the very beginning of the game and, and as you set off on your adventure and, and meet up with your friends and stuff. So... Uh, they showed a lot of the the early music to that that is present in the X and Y games and everything. So here's a little video showing that. So uh, then the 20th track was Professor Sycamore, um, so that sounded pretty cool. Uh, and then the final track of the night was Friends, Fights, and Finales. And this was um, pretty decent, you know, video, like pretty long, um, and it kind of, it was very epic. And it showed um, kind of like a full journey, like with with all your, your, your friends from the X and Y games and everything. Um, it did a, a whole sequence showing all the gym leaders, which was really epic and awesome. And so I had to record that, so check it out.
So that was really sweet. I, I love that part. And then, uh, yeah, so, you know, it kind of, lots of other scenes in there. And then basically I, I also recorded the very ending to it, which it kind of ended off and showed the Symphonic Evolutions logo and stuff as well. So here's the, the ending to, to that track. And then that was that. That was kind of the, the end of the concert. The orchestra, you know, stood up and everything. And I, I took some pictures of, of, of the orchestra and the conductor. And I did a little panoramic image, which I thought turned out pretty nicely. So I was, I was pretty happy with, with that. So you can kind of see the orchestra. And it was, again, it was really cool having them up close and everything. That was, that was awesome. Um, I definitely love that. Um, but uh, afterwards, they brought up uh, two guys. I uh, forget their names, but they were like the... The producers and, and they, they helped arrange the, the music and everything for the concert um, and so they kind of came up and then said thank you and everything and, and kind of talked for a bit and then they said you know what we're going to do one more track and they brought on a special guest they brought on uh, Laura Intravia um, who uh, is a singer but she also you may know her as Flute Link from Video Games Live she kind of was with Video Games Live and, and toured with them a little bit um, and was known as Flute Link because she played the flute and dressed up as Link. Um, in fact, they called her Laura Flute Link in Travia or something, but on a, in, the, in the concert, she just came up to sing, basically. So they brought, up, they brought on Laura, and, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're trying to think of what song people are going to sing when it comes to Pokemon, only one song really comes to mind, and that is Gotta Catch Em All, the Pokemon theme song. So... Uh, they actually did the Pokemon theme song, and they brought, uh, like, she kind of sang, and they had the whole audience sing along, too, and it was really cool. Everybody was all excited and getting into it, and and uh, they had the video clips and everything from the show alongside it, too, which was really sweet. So um, that was a lot of fun. I, I thought it was it was a nice, nice ending there. Um, and uh, I actually recorded the entirety of from when the orchestra ended up to the, the two producers and stuff, them talking and everything, talking to the audience, as well as the entire Gotta Catch Em All performance. I recorded all of that, so now you can check that out. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a wonderful audience. Um, I'd like to bring out to the stage our lead arranger and um, composer Chad Sider and associate executive producer Jaron Moore. <laughs> quite a while and we're so excited that all of you could be a part of it tonight. Uh, thank you for coming out.
So that was that, and uh, it was great. You know, I thought that was a lot of fun. It was a good ending, but that was not the ending. They were still another surprise. So the producers, they came back on stage, and they said, you know what, we got another person to introduce to you. And they brought on none other than Junichi Masuda, Game Freak director, and he, like... I mean, he was brought on stage, and I was so close to the stage, so he was, you know, like, super close to me, and it was it was awesome seeing him there. Um, and he kind of came on stage. He had his translator there, of course, so he, he spoke in Japanese and everything. Um, but you could tell that he was, like, really, like, taken aback by all the support and everything, and, and he was uh, really impressed by it. And, and uh, you know, there were, there were times when, like, I think somebody, like, in the audience yelled, you are not worthy, and, you know, he, he didn't really understand, so his translator kind of told him, and then he's like, what did he say? He's like, yeah, 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 or something like that, but it, it, he was he was awesome. Um, and somebody, the, the, the people behind me, I guess, that were Japanese, somebody, they said something in, in Japanese, and, and then he, I don't know what they said, and Masuda responded, and then he's like, the translator also said, like, you know, that Masuda didn't expect to hear anybody speak Japanese or something. But uh, it was just really cool just seeing him kind of surprised by everything. And since I was so up close to him, you could see, like, his hand was kind of shaking a little bit, too. So he was, like, kind of nervous being on stage. And, and it was really cool. Um, but he wasn't just up there to talk. They actually brought him on stage. He said, he said that this would be his first time ever conducting... Uh, I assume, like, in front of a, you know, an audience or something like that. So, um, he conducted the final encore for the night. Uh, he, he, he came up and he conducted the ending to Pokemon X and Y. It said Kiseki, I don't know how you pronounce it, but, um, uh, the, um, yeah, so he, he actually came up and conducted that, which was really cool. Um, before, I mean, he kind of talked a little bit about, you know, his, vision for the concert and this and that and, and a little bit and then he kind of then conducted after that but it, it was really cool seeing him conduct um i did record the the producers and and then bringing up junichi masuda on stage and, and all of his discussion i recorded all of that um and then when it came time for uh masuda to actually conduct the space on my phone ran out um, so unfortunately I couldn't really get that. I did try and clear a little bit though, and I got a little bit of that later, but, uh, so first things first, here's the video of the producers bringing Junichi Masuda on stage and him talking to the audience, so check it out. I'm really excited to be here tonight. So much so I kind of forgot what I was supposed to say, but I just want to say, <laughs> just really thankful to all of you. 
<笑>えー、今回ですねあのポケモンシンフォニーを、えー、実際にこう実現させて実現してくれた、えー、プリンストーンエンターテインメントの皆さんに、えー、この場を借りてお礼を申し上げたいと思います本当にありがとうございます So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Princeton Entertainment for really making this Pokemon Symphony possible. Thank you very much. And I'd also, of course, like to thank everyone in the orchestra tonight for an amazing performance. Thank you very much. So I feel like the music that I've created has kind of you know, left, left home and kind of gone into a you know, new form now in the form of this concert. And of course, you know, all of you probably recognize a lot of the scenes from the video games. So this kind of using the video game footage and taking this new kind of music is maybe, you know, an evolution, I think, of uh, the Pokemon music. <laughs> えー、そしてですね、今日、えー、ご来場の皆さん、えー、そして長く、えー、ポケモンに、まあ、熱いファンでいてくださっている皆さん、えー、本当にありがとうございます。そして、えー、ありがとうございます。そして、ありがとうございます。Without all of your support, nothing like this would have been possible. Thank you very much. So I'd like to take you know, the energy of the music here tonight and really use it to make the Pokemon World Championships tomorrow much more exciting. So I hope you all go check out the show. So tonight, I'm actually going to be conducting for the first time in my life. I'm very excited to be here. The song is called Pokemon XY's ending of the song. As you can see, I'm a bit nervous, but the song I'm going to conduct tonight is the song that plays during the ending of Pokemon X and Y. So one of the main themes of the song that I'm about to conduct is kind of meeting people in the same era, the same age as yourself. So, for example, you have your, your grandparents. They grew up in the same age they met, and then, of course, they had your parents. And then, of course, your parents, they had to grow up in the same era, the same age, and then they met each other. And, of course, you guys were born, obviously, all of us. <laughs> So, what I'm trying to say is that unless you live in the same time as another person, there's no way you can meet them. So, what I really had in mind was just wanting people to really. those shared lives that you have with other people really just makes them very important to yourself and really take care of those relationships. え、今日ここで皆さんと出会ったのも、そしてえ、ちゃんとえ、全音とそしてま、クラシックのオーケストラの皆さんと出会ったのももう本当にこれは奇跡としか言えないと思います。And <笑> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
いわいわいえー、それでは式をしてみたいと思いますのであの最後までお楽しみくださいと So I'd like to conduct the song now I hope you enjoy it So that was pretty sweet. And so then when Masuda actually came up to conduct, I got like 12 seconds or something, a video of him like about to get ready to conduct. And then it cuts off as soon as he is about to start because of course, right? So uh, here's that footage for just for fun. And then when all said and done, um, basically, uh, I, I tried to delete some, some space while the thing was going on so I could actually record some of it. So I did actually get to record a little piece of Masuda conducting, and they actually brought out Laura and Travia back on stage to sing for, for, for this as well. Um, so I got a little scene, and I actually got the perfect part because for part of it, Masuda's conducting, and then he actually turns around for a little bit and conducts and, like, and to the audience a little bit. So you can tell he's, he's excited and having fun. So that was actually really cool. So I did get that part on video, so check it out. And with that, that ends the concert. So uh, yeah, I mean, you can. Here's a little image of the audience, you know, leaving that you can see. I mean, it was it was packed. There was a lot of people, um, but it was so much fun. I, I um, shook hands with with uh, the guy from Poke Beach again, and and said it was it was nice meeting him. And um, I, I debated staying for the signing part. I was like, well, I don't have anything to sign. I was like, maybe I can get a picture with Masuda. But then I was like, well, I don't know if they're gonna allow pictures. If they're just gonna do signing or what. And I was like, there's such a long line, anyways, and I'm tired. And I kind of had a headache because I actually I didn't bring any like water bottles or anything So I didn't drink any water for a while. I was like, I just I'm tired It's gonna be a long time to get back for the metro and driving home and all that So I didn't stay for the signing. I figured I got close enough to Masuda as is which was really cool And and I was perfectly fine with that. So All in all I had a blast. I thought it was an awesome experience I went for the music and they did not disappoint uh, the music was great uh, but it was just a really cool experience just seeing Pokemon fans of all ages there um, Having Junichi Masuda be there, which was really cool and actually having him conduct and everything. It felt very special mm -hmm. um, And I guess because it was a big world championship event seeing all these other people there like I guess the Jay Wits I guess which I didn't really know who he was at the time But but still just the fact that you had all these people there and of course the guy from Poke Beach John and, and getting to, to meet him and talk to him It was it was a lot of fun. So I had a blast, and uh, it was it was so much fun. So, I wanted to record this vlog. I know this is going to be like probably my longest vlog ever, super super long. It's already it's like 1:07 a.m. now, and I am insanely tired. That's why I may be talking about stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, it was very exciting, and I don't look very excited. Trust me, I am. I'm just very tired. Um, but I wanted to get all my thoughts out now while they're fresh in my mind, basically. Um, so that was it. That was the Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions concert. If you get a chance to go, um, by the time I upload this, I don't know, it might be too late for the other DC concert, but they are going to Pennsylvania 
I forget where in Pennsylvania and Philly maybe I don't know and and I'm sure if it's successful which it is pretty much then they'll probably you know do it elsewhere as well um but I think this was something special Masuda was only a part of it because he was there for Worlds um so there's that but it was an awesome experience and uh, I had a blast so uh, I'm gonna go get some rest and then I'll edit the video tomorrow and get it uploaded so you can watch this on, on Saturday. And then on Sunday I will be there at the Pokemon World Championships. I don't know when, you know, what time or, or where in the, the area I'll be, but but I will try and come. I'll try and bring some of my cousins and stuff with me since they're visiting from California and I, I think it might be cool for them to, to come along and, and check it out. Um, so yeah, it should be fun. I'm excited about that and I will vlog that as well. So you can stay tuned for, for that vlog. That should be pretty sweet. Uh, and if you see me, definitely say hi. I don't know. I'll probably actually, I'll be wearing this hat. Um, just cause I still, that, the hair transplant procedure and everything, I figured I'll just still wear this and I'll probably be wearing this shirt. So look out for somebody wearing this shirt with this hat. Although everybody will probably, there'll be a lot of people wearing this shirt. I'm sure. Um, but, uh, look for this hat or something. Look for me, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so it was a blast. I love the Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions concert, so props to you, Nintendo, and, and Game Freak, and the Pokemon Company, and everybody involved. I thought it was, it was great. It was an awesome experience. Um, and I am excited to check out the Pokemon World Championships and see how that goes on, on Sunday. So that's that. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was long, but I hope... All the little video clips and images and everything made it entertaining. I wanted to share my experience with, with all of you. Um, so that's that. Thanks for watching, and see you guys later.